Hello again, and thank you for joining us. My name is uh, Captain Shane Healy, and I'm from City Salvos in Adelaide, uh, where we're based on Perry Street as a church. Um, during this time of COVID-19, as you're all aware, um, we, we can't meet as a church, so my wife Sarah and I, Captain Sarah and I, are choosing to do these little uh, blogs and just share some thoughts about some scripture, and we're asking you to uh, observe uh, and reflect and put in some application uh, from that scripture as well so that we continue to be the church. This week's passage we've been looking at John 21 15 to 25 and it's when the disciples as we as as you would have read were on the beach um, they've just had a big massive breakfast and a feed and then they meet uh, and Peter uh, Jesus takes Peter, Simon Peter aside uh, and just shares with him a little bit about you know do you love me and, and are you prepared to follow me? For this week, that word follow me really jumped out at me. Um, uh, there's so much that you could pull from, but God just kept revealing to me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Every time I looked at it, it was just those words, follow me, that jumped out. I thought back to when the disciples first followed Christ. They left what they knew. They were fishermen, they were tax collectors. Um, there was a zealot amongst them. and. And they left all that they knew and, and, and risked something in order to follow this rabbi. And that journey led them to understand that he was the son of God and, and, um, and, and to follow him all the way to the death on his cross where sadly they denied him but their faith was renewed. Um, and this is where this passage picks up, where Peter's faith is being renewed. So for me, following Christ is about trusting him. It's about obedience. It's about sacrifice. It's about it's about willing to follow him regardless of yeah regardless of the cost, and just continue to trust him. In Matthew sixteen twenty four to twenty six, Jesus actually tells the disciples at this stage that they are to follow him um, and to deny themselves and to take up their crosses. Of course, they didn't know what that meant then, but it became very real uh, a few years later. So for me, this means to make hard decisions. Following him means making those hard decisions regardless of the sacrifice. Despite the, even the lack of popularity or the disharmony that that might create, um, if God is asking us to do something, then, then and his, we must follow his will. Obviously, you do your background, you seek it out, and you, you trust that the Holy Spirit's leading you. You can get guidance and counsel for that. But, but for me, who likes to keep harmony and to keep people happy, uh, following him is a real challenge um, because because sometimes I, I want to just keep people happy despite what God says. So God really impressed on me, as I've said, those words, follow me. When Jesus was on the beach in our passage of John 20, he even alluded to Simon Peter that he was to follow him to death on a cross. And Simon Peter, of course, has suffered that. And so Jesus paints him this picture. I don't think Simon Peter understood then what he was talking about, but but that's that's the limits of which we are to follow him. We're to put God first above all things. We're to put him before our friends, um, our family, our own personal desires, our wishes, our feelings, um, and and to the point of even being you know uncomfortable, but in trusting God and knowing that He has us by the hand and He's guiding us every single step. To be in his will is most important in making sure that we follow him. It means making sometimes the unpopular decisions. And uh, we're forced as, as leaders to make these decisions all the time. And COVID-19 has just ramped them up even more and more. We make unpopular decisions because we want to put God first, regardless of, of what other people might say or wish or want. As a Salvation Army, we have these two arms. We have, a, in a way, we have a charity and we also have a church. But really the church is first and foremost. We are to follow Christ and out of our love for Christ and his love and desire for us, we do our charity. And we need in these days and times to continue to put that hope before people. Yes, it's good that we, we do good things. We, we, we keep people happy and, and we feed them and, and we serve the community. But we must present Christ as a hope. 
um, above all other things, that, that is what must come first. So that's been my challenge this week. As, as a church, how do we do that? How do we do that with fresh eyes post COVID-19? And so I've been working hard with Captain Sarah and some of our staff and working, trying to find out, find, discover and highlight, I guess, faith pathways for people that we may already have uh, and some that we're going to have to put in place so that when people come to us, they don't just simply get a food parcel or, a, or some food or a, or a blanket but actually get the opportunity to, to accept Christ and to put him first. This may be uncomfortable for some of us, but we must, we must keep him first. So I wonder how have you been doing this week? What has God been saying to you out of this passage? Now, I'm excited if you give me a ring and, or give me a text and tell me what God is telling you. I wonder if he's saying similar messages of trusting him and, and listening to his voice and following him. Next week, uh, Sarah gets, or in a few days' time, Sarah will bring to us our next passage, which is all focused on the ascension and, uh, and a great commission. And so that comes from six, Mark 16, 14 to 20. So um, if you want to read that through and, 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 and get to grips with that passage and listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying, then that would be really awesome. So it's Mark 16, 14 to 20. May God continue to bless you. Uh, and, and, and may you continue to honour him as, as you serve him and put him first. God bless. See you guys.